Okay, picking back up for part two of our video. So again, we have another example here. Um, so again, I could take the time to draw this linear line, draw this linear line. I've provided a graph if you want to do it for yourself, but I'm going to go ahead and show it to you for sake of time. So here is that linear line, three minus X. Here is that positive linear line, one half X plus one, because that's another way I could write that. So let's look at what's happening. In order to answer this question right here, I have to be able to answer the limit from the left and the limit from the right. Right. So what is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x? Of course, there's an f of x right here. So I come down and do, 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 do. I get to x equals 2, and my y value at that point is 1. What about the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x? Let's go ahead and write that in from the right. Well, doo -doo 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 -doo, I follow along. I get to x equals 2. And look at my y value. It's actually a positive 2. So the limit from the left equals 1. The limit from the right equals 2. Hmm, they don't equal each other. Does my limit exist? No, it does not. And since my limit does not exist, we can go ahead and say DNE, my limit does not exist. And our justification would be the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right. If this were a free response question, of course, I would take the time to write out my full answer. DNE, the limit as, as X approaches two of my function does not exist because, and explain the limit from the left equals one, the limit from the right equals two, therefore blah, blah, blah. But what is my function value at two? Well, seeing as these do not have an equal two, that means none of them are inclusive. Technically, there's a big old hole right here. There's a big old hole right here. So does my function value exist? No, it is undefined or it does not exist. Mm. Okay, so here are a couple algebraic solves for you. I'm going to do the first one, and then um, I'm going to, if we have time, I'll do the other two. So what do I do for an algebraic approach? In order to figure out what the limit is from the left and the, the limit is, I have to figure out the limit from the left and the limit from the right. In order to figure out that function value, I simply evaluate the piecewise function. So like I said, we're going to need a little bit of extra information. We're going to need these little buddies right here. So let's take a moment to look at this, what's happening in my qualifiers, my like, what is, what are my domain restrictions, basically. So I have a quadratic that is less than two. So what can I do for myself? I could sketch a very, oops, I have no idea what I did, but I could sketch a very basic graph. I'm not going to make it anything crazy. I'm just going to draw something simplistic. Ooh, funky graph. So I know that below two, I have some sort of positive quadratic. Again, this is where parent functions become our best friends. So if you are struggling with parent functions, learn them, live them. At two, I also have a coordinate point at six. I'm drawing it above, but I have no idea. They could be connected. I have to evaluate that. And finally, between two and six, I know I have a linear line. It's going to definitely have a, it's a negative linear line, slope of one, and it starts, or at least it hits the y-intercept at 10. I cannot get that, that pen up there. There we go. At 10. Okay, so I can draw that line. Coming down. Something like that. Oh, sorry. It should not be right here. Should not be right there, right? It starts at 2. Okay. But in order to truly figure this out, it helps to be on the same page, right? Ms. Jag shouldn't flip through. In order to truly figure this out, I actually have to know these values right here. So what do I do? I plug them into their values. So from the left, that's going to be what's less than 2. Okay, so let's plug that in. What is simply ah, 2 squared? Well, that equals 4. So I know at this point right here, that's actually 2 comma 4. Well, I'm well below that coordinate point, but who knows? This could still connect. Theoretically, we're looking at it and we're like, we know our parent functions. We know that that's not going to connect, but we still need to algebraically solve that. So let's plug in from the right. Again, from the right, that's this point right here to the right of 2. So I plug it into its equation. 10 minus 2 tells me my answer is 8. So up here, I started um, at 
two comma eight. So I see this giant gap. Do you think the limit from the left and the limit from the right equal each other? No. So my limit does not exist because the limit from oops, the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right. And this is justification I will take right now. But what is my function value at two? Well, that's in my piecewise function. That's literally declared right there. But if it wasn't, I would again assess my piecewise and figure out which one encompasses two. So this is equal to six. Okay, let's do one more solve because I think we do have a little bit of time left on this recording. So here we have another one. So the same thing, I would kind of suss it out, get a general idea. So that tells me that I have some sort from, what are we going from? Negative four to one and then to positive infinity is what my qualifiers look like, which is that part right there. Then I'm gonna look, I've got a linear positive line from negative four to one with an intercept of five, not 100% sure what's happening there. And then greater than one from one to infinity, I have a negative line with a positive three intercept. So it would have started here and probably is gonna look like that. Maybe, we're not 100% sure. I'm not really asking you to graph them, I'm just getting a general idea. So I perceive that there's a giant gap, so I'm guessing that this, limit will not exist. But let's test that algebraically. So from the left, that means that's this function right here because that is less than one. That's from the left on my numeric value. So I plug in two times one plus five, not divide plus. So that becomes uh, two plus five, which is simply seven. From the right, that's right, this one right here. So I'm gonna plug in this equation, negative one plus three, so that's two. So again, my limit does not exist because the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right. Looking at my function value, I have to look at what includes one. Does this include one? No, it says X is greater than one. So that means I approach one. I could be at 1.0000000001 ad infinitum. I could be as many zeros close to an approaching value to one, but I'm not including one. So I am not gonna use this equation, but this one includes one right here. It tells me less, greater, less than or equal to one. So I'm gonna use that equation, two X plus five. I already did that solve right here. So I know that my answer equals seven. Let's do one more solve. Let's get that answer going. Oof, why is that not working? Okay, let's do one more solve. So again, if I want, I can do a little sketch to see it, but I, do I really need to do that at this point? I know that there's an algebraic solve. So I'm gonna look from the left. From the left tells me this, I am less than and equal to two. So that is from the left. So I plug in two. Ooh. I plug in two, if it lets me, there we go, equals four. And then from the right, I'm gonna use this value right here that's greater than two, which means I'm to the right of the number line of two. So I plug that in, negative two plus one squared plus 13. So that's negative, this is three, that's nine. So negative nine plus 13 is, wow, I can't do four. Oh, okay. So the limit from the left equals four, the limit from the right equals four. That means the limit at that point equals four because the limit from the left and the limit from the right equal each other. You can put your justification. I don't know why I put another equal sign there, my apologies. Now we finally finish with our function value of two. So again, to figure this out, I look for what includes two. This equation up here includes two. So I use that, I plug it in. I've already done that solve right here. So that means my answer is four. And look at that, these match each other, which is great because that leads us into our next topic, which is the formal definition of continuity. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Ah, where's the thing?